Hey y'all, I'm Captain E sitting in for Andrew Upshaw this week on Let's Fish TV. I'm proud to have you back here in Murrow's Inlet on my home waters. We're going to go chase some flounder. Miss Bria here at Crazy Sister Marina in the new tackle shop and bait store down here, getting us loaded up with some mud minnows to get a start. Next time you see me, we're going to be out on the water doing some battle with some South Carolina flounder. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh. Check that out. It's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southeast region every week. Cobia! Big one. And a monster! Look Beautiful. at that! That's a Tawakimi giant. This is Let's Fish. All right, folks, it is my pleasure to be once again at the helm of Let's Fish TV this week, sitting in for Andrew Upshaw, and I am Captain E, your Carolina's reporter every week, but I do get to sit back and take over the helm every now and then to help Andrew, who's out there pursuing that Elite Series membership, and it's my pleasure to bring you back to the Grand Strand area and to Merle's Inlet. First time in a couple years I've had you right here at Merle's Inlet. We're going flounder fishing. Five or six years ago, Barry Stokes and I went out and did it. Fish similar places, but we're gonna be at the jetties at Huntington Beach State Park. Beautiful state park located at the south end of the Grand Strand here, right at the end of Merle's Inlet. A beautiful place you can get out and enjoy, and you can also walk out to the jetties, pay your fee, get out there, and go catch fish right where we're gonna to be today on the show. And while we're out on the water today, our Let's Fish Inside reporters are gonna bring you all the reports from your home waters. Fresh water, salt water, it doesn't matter. We'll have it all covered in today's episode. So it's gonna be a great show. I'm so excited to have you back down here. But let's go to the studio for the weekend plan. Hi everybody, these salooner tables are showing fair fishing conditions on both days this weekend. Peak daytime action begins at 3.47 on Saturday and 4.37 Sunday afternoon. Nighttime action will begin around 3.23 on Saturday and 4.12 early Sunday morning. Depending on your local area, you can expect the sun to rise around 6.36 and set around 8.34. Plus, evenings will have a moon that is 20% visible. Stay tuned. When we return, we will have fishing reports from throughout the area. Plus, I'll return with MLF angler Mike McClellan to answer your Ask the Pro question. So one thing about this spot where we're fishing, and we are gonna show you some footage of just how close we are to the beach here. As the tide gets higher, you'll start getting some breakers in here. It gets a little bit rougher as it is right now, you can tell. I wanna show you exactly. This is the size mullet I'm throwing. A little bit bigger one, you know, three to four inch range on that jig head. And I wanna show you exactly how I work it. Now, what I'm doing is trying to get it to about three or four feet off of those rocks right there. And then I'm going to let it sit for a second. What I'll do is just let it sit. And then all I'm doing is a little bit of twitch, twitch. And just reel in a little bit of drag there. Or drag it on the bottom is what I meant, sorry. Twitch, twitch. And then just give it a little bit of a drag on the bottom. Flounder, obviously, we really think they all stay on the bottom at all times. They don't. And I'll see the flounder swimming along the rocks. There's a lot of flounder right here. Um, we're, there are a lot of flounder here. I'm not, I'm not kidding. This isn't just made for TV. Uh, there are a lot of flounder here right now. And with this bigger mullet that I've got on, this is a little bigger than what I've been throwing, I'm probably gonna eliminate some of those 16, 17 inch fish, but the one that bites this is gonna be the one we want to show you on camera. And uh, if he doesn't bite, we'll get a smaller one and try it. But that's the other thing, bait wise out here, you know, Mullet, absolute, probably the tops right now. I stopped by before we came out. I stopped at Crazy Sister Marina, grabbed some mud minnows, got some mud minnows in the live well to make sure we had something in case we couldn't catch the mullet. But also the little bunkers, little baby pogies, manhaden, whatever you want to call them, the tiny bunkers um, are great baits. They don't last as long on the hook, but they catch fish. Hey, it's time for your Carolina's report brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina, the leader in water sports on the Grand Strand. Hey, we want to take care of you, get you out on the water. We've got a new bait and tackle shop downstairs at the marina. You may remember our ship store upstairs. This is new and we've got every bait you need to have a successful day on the water. If you come down and rent one of our boats and do it yourself, we're going to get you on the fish. Visit CrazySisterMarina.com to find out more information and let's talk about that red snapper season that happened 
you know, it was insane to see all the great pictures, but the fact is the red snapper population is perfectly healthy. South Atlantic Fisheries Management Council needs to hear it from us. They need to see your pictures. They need to know that they need to loosen up on these stringent regulations and give us a little more rights to bring back these red snapper. Those nearshore areas have also been covered up with gag grouper, which I tend to blame for the red snapper and how they have taken over that 80 to 110 foot of water that the scamp groupers used to enjoy. Now we've had a great time this summer getting out and targeting mackerel along the beach. The Spanish mackerel bite just continues to be great. Find those schools of bait, get some spoons out, get a planer out. You're gonna have some success and catch a lot of fish this time of the year. This has been your Carolina's Report brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. We are here at beautiful Huntington Beach, South Carolina. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Come here. All right. Catching flounder. I tell you what, this time of the year when it gets hot, you cannot overlook coming out and hitting anywhere in the ocean that has some type of structure. Oh, look at here. He's fired up now. Oh, no. Net down. Net down. Look at there. I got it. Look at there, you ready? And the fish is still on. And the fish is still on. Look, right there. You cannot overlook this structure. This structure is important for them. A lot of things. Bait comes in here. And the other thing is, look at there. Now that is a uh, nice, I would say 16 and a half incher. South Carolina's finest. And unlike our brothers and sisters in North Carolina, we are able to continue to flounder fish. I'm gonna get pliers and get that out real quick. Show you what I'm using today. I'm gonna be using a Carolina rig. Hey, we're in South Carolina. Why not use a Carolina rig? We use it for everything else. And I'm using a nice little half ounce. I'll switch and use a three quarter ounce jig as well. But right now we got a lot of current. I'm gonna throw a half ounce, but that's definitely a legal keeper. We're not gonna keep her today. We're gonna let her go and uh, get back out there. But what we're fishing on right now, honestly, this is Huntington Beach State Park. Beautiful set of jetties that you can actually come out and fish yourself right on top of the jetties. I've watched so many people, including the people right up here now, cast as far away from the jetties as they can, and they're throwing right past the fish. I'm throwing to the rocks and fishing that first five to 10 foot right off the rocks where they're getting some white water that's going in there. It's oxygenating that water. You got the mullet and the bait fish that are now getting pushed up on there, but we're gonna get some great action today. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Have fun out there. Visit Mississippi, Wanderers Welcome, Powerful, Total Boat Control, Balls Out, Made in the USA, Heavy Duty Mounts for your fish finders, Rely On, Challenge Your Limits. With the lose, oh, wait a minute. No way, dude, he's off to the races. There's no way I just did that. All right, there we go. I'll tell you, you know, coming out to go flounder fishing, flounder, a redfish, obviously, probably the most sought after sporting game fish that we have inshore around here. But a lot of locals would argue, oh, another nice keeper. Wow. A lot of locals would argue, I'm a, I'm a netting, I'm a netting. A lot of locals would argue that flounder are probably the most sought after. and. With recent regulation changes that we've had, I mean, look, that's 16 inches. There's no reason to even measure him. We're gonna let him go though. We're keeping a couple good ones for dinner. We're gonna let him go. But, so I'm rotating between Carolina rigs. I've got a, a dead man rod out. I've, I've got a, just a rod sitting out back of the boat with a Carolina rig on it, come here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get this jig out of here and show you again exactly what this is. Let me get him back. It's hot. I don't want to keep him out in the water too long. 
He's gone. He's feeling good. All right, so there you go. That's it. You know, you can find Mission Fish and you've got, Z-Man's got some great jigs. A lot of jigs work. I like the longer shaft. Sweeper jigs are not so good. I think I used them in the uh, Sheep's Head Show. They're not so good in here for flounder. I don't like the fact that the shorter hook, they're gonna feel that lead a lot quicker. With this longer shake hook, it gives them a little more time to eat it, swallow that bait. And again, with the jig head, I don't need to give him that 10 seconds like normal. I'll give him about a four to five count, set the hook as hard as I can, try to make him fly in the boat out the water. But I tell you what, again, all along the Carolinas, you know, our friends in North Carolina, they're gonna get September for their flounder, but the flounder bite is incredible. Near shore, reefs, awesome fishing right now. Along the jetties, whether your little river, Merle's Inlet, Georgetown, down to Charleston, all along the jetties, you're gonna find where these fish populate because of the bait that's moving along the water and because of the oxygen. Hey, let's go to your body of water. Let's see what's happening there. You got some great reporters to share some reports. Let's go there. Hey y'all, welcome to my favorite part of the show, the Alabama, Mississippi and Georgia Coastal Fishing Report. Wrapping up a trip right now, out here on my beautiful blue wave. This segment is brought to you by me, Captain Patrick Garmison. If you'd like to take a fishing trip on this blue wave or, or the other blue wave I own uh, with Captain Taylor, you can go online and book online or you can give me a call or shoot me a text at 251-747-1554. Fishing around here has been really good. We have a lot of diversity in the Alabama waters. We're catching speckled trout, we're catching redfish, jacks, Spanish mackerel, uh, just to name a few fish. Um, the, uh, the jacks, we're finding most of those guys around schools of pogies, as well as the bull reds. Uh, we're catching Spanish mackerel out of, in the lower end of Mobile Bay and out into the Gulf using live shrimp and a variety of jigs. Speckled trout are in great numbers everywhere, uh, but there's a lot of little fish. If you're using live shrimp or shrimp imitation, you're probably gonna catch some little micro trout anywhere from 12 to 14 inches. A lot of fish are going back, not many fish going home if, uh, if that's the school of fish you land on. A lot of little red fish as well. So the future is bright here on Mobile Bay uh, with a lot of action, a lot of smaller fish. Uh, if you want to catch some bigger trout, it seems like using live croakers and artificial lures of all things, topwater baits in particular, uh, would be a good choice for speckled trout in Alabama. The Mississippi coast talked to Andrew Whitman. He said that the speckled trout bite has been really good. Uh, shrimp and uh, finger mullet are his baits of choice. Also talking about how he's got a lot of small fish around. Redfish and drum are plentiful throughout the, the, uh, throughout the bays. And he said the jacks and the bull reds are starting to show up around the uh, near shore uh, barrier islands and stuff. And he said that bite should should improve every day. Uh, Garrett Ross out of out of Savannah, Georgia, with Miss Judy's Charter, said that the speckled trout and redfish bite is really good. A lot of small fish eating shrimp. And he said the flounder bite is really good, uh, along where the sandy bottom meets uh, some sort of uh, oysters or some sort of hard bottom structure. Uh, where, where that definitive line is, he said that's where the flounder are gonna be. He said also the jacks and the tarpon are showing up. Jacks are a little bit tougher to catch for some reason. He said there's a lot of bait around him might, that might be part of it. So sometimes in my, in my experience, if jacks are a little harder to catch, you almost have to aggravate them with a, a big lure, something that's making a lot of racket to get their attention and, and you just about have to make them mad. So uh, thanks for catching this report. Y'all keep what you need, leave the rest. God bless, guys. Talking about using different rods, you know, I'm using the spinning rod here, the inshore speed stick for my Carolina rig, and then I'm jigging with the loose. Oh, wait a minute. No way, dude, he's off to the races. Oh, there's no way I just did that. Oh, this, this one's unbelievable. Oh, man, can you get that one on? Oh. Oh, this is incredible. And this is not how it is every time, of, all, all times of the year. Boy, I might not be the most graceful netter, but when it comes to putting a nice 18, 19 incher in the boat, whoo, lordy, let's get him in the house. That one right there is gonna be dinner. I don't care if you fry them, broil them, grill them, Stuff them with crab, shrimp, it doesn't matter. 
It don't get any better than flounder, that's for sure. And this time of the year, again, the bite can just be incredible. We've come out the full moon, had that full moon, and really sent the mullet. All right, come here, buddy. Really sent the mullets to making their migration and their move on the beach. And these are right there with them. That's going to be dinner, y'all. That is going to be dinner. Again, Huntington Beach State Park, beautiful state park that South Carolina has, has here. We're right outside of it on this incredible jetty system, paved rocks on the top of it. You notice all the families out here, just a beautiful spot to get out. If you don't have a boat, you come in, pay in, go to the state park, walk that half mile down the beach, bring your rods. I'm gonna tell you a trick real quick. Don't throw away from the rocks. Don't throw as far as you can. Climb out on the edge of the rocks. These fish are all laid along the rocks. Get out here and go fish. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Lose, Feel the Difference, Mamba Boats, Ride with Pride, Strike King, Taiwan On, Fishing Specialties, makers of the premier mount assembly for live sonar. There we go. Nope, that's not a little bite. Oh, buddy, look at this. Oh, this is a good fish. There we go. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Stay out the trolling motor. Stay out the trolling motor. Oh, this is the one we're looking for. This is the size we get out here. I tell you, this time of the year, when the mullet are starting to really run, these flounder know where the buffet is. They're not idiots. Look up there. Look up there. Look up there. Look at that one. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Look at that. That is what you can expect out here this time of the year. Whether it's near shore reefs, whether it's a, along the jetties, along the beach, you're going to find your bigger flounder this year. I tell you, every summer, I tell everybody, go to the reef, go to the jetties, go flounder fishing. They're here. I'm going to get this jig out of his mouth here, and we're going to keep some of these for dinner. I tell you what, it's that time of the year where you can get out on your body of water, enjoy some great catch and a great dinner. That ocean out there was getting ready to get really rough. It happens, that tide comes up, the winds pick up in the afternoon. And so we moved on the other side of the rocks. We're fishing in here, we got a lot of mullet coming down the beach over here on the rocks as well. And I just got a, a little bite there. There we go. No, that's not a little bite. Oh, buddy, look at this. Oh, this is a good fish. This is a good fish. What did he do? He has got me hung in something on the bottom. Oh, got him. Wow, that is crazy. Uh-oh, there we go. Let's get the net here. We've got umbrellas flying. Hey, if you want to see what it looks like, how bad the wind's blowing, there's your umbrella right there. Oh, this is a good one, dude. Oh boy, y'all. I tell you what, oh, look at there. Come on, get in, get in, get in, get in. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, look at that. Man, that is a really good one. Now, what we've moved into, actually on this backside of it, is almost opposite of what we were fishing over there. And I can tell you that this fish has no chance of going back. This is gonna be another one that we're gonna put in with the others, and we're gonna eat that one later. But we're fishing we got the rocks to come out. This is man-made again, all man-made. The rocks come out about 10, 15 feet off the bottom under surface there, and then a real steep drop. These fish love laying on that deep drop. They'll lay on that edge, waiting on these schools of bait fish to come in and out. And uh, once again, no need to measure that big boy right there, or girl. She's gonna go home for dinner. She's gonna get to meet some grease, so there's no release for her. But hey, it's been a great time out having you on my home waters here once again for another episode of Let's Fish TV. And uh, I hope to be back again and do this, as, do this another time or as much as Andrew wants me to. I love sharing what we do here in the Grand Strand area, Georgetown County, Merle's Inlet. 
We've got some incredible fishing. You need to book your trip, crazysystemmarina.com. Come down and do it. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for new fishing videos every day. And download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury, Go Boldly, Lorenz, the ultimate fishing system, Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Plan or book your fishing charter at orangebeach.com. Motor Guides Tour Pro with GPS Anchor, powered by passion. Glacier Outdoor, outdoors since 1982. Welcome back, everybody. Let's get right on over to your Ask the Pro question for this week. This week, Britt would like to know, what attributes helped you become a professional angler? Good question, Britt. For the answer, we asked MLF angler Mike McClellan. Hey everyone, MLF pro Mike McClellan here. And when you start talking about the attributes that helped you become, or helped me become a professional angler, I'm gonna have to say just the uh, hard work and dedication that my dad, my grandfather, and everybody taught me at a really young age. You know, I think that's one of the things in this day and age that we've seen with so much of the younger generation is, is they didn't grow up, you know, doing that physical labor, the manual labor that a lot of us, I mean, I'm 55 years old now. And uh, I grew up in that area. I was a painter, I was a wall covering hanger. I did a lot of different things. And I think that was one of the biggest things that made me realize that to be good at anything, to be successful at anything, you gotta put in the hard work. And, and fish is just like that. You know, you don't just get on a boat, go out there and catch them one after another without a lot of hard work and dedication. And I really believe that's why I'm where I'm at today. Thanks so much, Mike. If you want some help as well from one of the pros, simply go to letsfishtv.com and follow that Ask the Pro link to submit a question. Here's today's Right Stuff, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Hey y'all, let's talk real quick about what we were using on the boat today, and I'll tell you, I always fall back on that luge inshore speed stick combo here in the spinning reel, a great combo, and I'll tell you, in 7.3, medium with fast action, it works perfect around those jetties, feeling that flounder bite, and able to get the fish to the boat. And you know, most of the time I was using the Carolina rig today. Carolina rig is a perfect rig. And what I'm using is 20 pound fluorocarbon with a number four offset kale hook. Also three quarter and half ounce egg sinkers rotating between them as that current picked up. Also in the jig side of it, you know, I was using quite a few jigs. The Ice Strike Redfish jig is a great jig for out there. Really strong hook will hold up around those rocks when you're fishing. And again, I fluctuated between the quarter ounce and the half ounce jigs out there. I also used the Lose Custom Pro Baitcaster and Rod Combo, another great combo that works perfect for flounder, whether you're on those jetties or fishing back in the creek. All right, y'all, it's been my pleasure to have you on my home waters here again to sit in for Andrew and take over the helm of Let's Fish TV for him. I know this is his baby, but it is great to get out and show everything that we do here on our home waters in the Grand Strand. Give Crazy Sister Marina a call. CrazySisterMarina.com if you want to find more information about how you can enjoy the waters here. But remember, we're in the public landing here at Merle's Inlet. All the public landings across the Carolinas are crazy busy right now. It's summertime. Everybody wants to enjoy the water. Bring a lot of patience with you. Be prepared when you get to the landing as you're backing down and launching your boat. And also, offer help to anybody. Don't sit there and heckle people. Give them help. It's been my pleasure once again. And as always, hey, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. <music>